Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use a program called Potter Draw. And Potter Draw is a free uh, program. You can download it uh, at potterdraw.sourceforge.io. And it is a modeling program designed for vessels. So it's specifically made to design um, you know, vessels of different shapes and, and configurations and sizes. Now it's designed for a PC. And so if you have a PC, it's easy. You just download it and install it and run it. Um, and, uh, but if you're on a Mac, you'll need to run it on a virtual machine and, um, just Google how to uh, run a PC program on a Mac and it'll walk you through it. Uh, you can also run it on Linux uh, as well. So, um, anyway, it, it is a, a pretty much a kind of a, um, a really pretty basic program, but it's, um, it's pretty powerful once you start getting into the features over here. And, um, but also know that it hasn't been, it, it's not in current development. So it looks like the last update was in 2018. And um, so anyway, what you'll do is when you start with a, um, you know, a, a new file here, you'll get a kind of a default cylinder, okay? A pretty thick, uh, just straight walled cylinder. And uh, so what I like to do is I like to come up here to render first and click on render and unclick texture. And that will just give you a, um, you know, a, just a gray cylinder. It's a little bit easier to see those, those uh, colors and lines are pretty distracting. So the next thing I like to do is go over here to wall thickness, and I'm going to change this to two and hit enter. And that's going to change the wall thickness so that it's uh, along the lines of something that we might throw on the wheel, a little bit thinner. And um, so there are a ton of different options and um, configurations here. There would be thousands and thousands of configurations uh, for different things that you can do to the vessel over here. I'm not going to walk through all of them um, for the sake of the length of this video, but um, I will go through a handful of those. The other uh, really interesting um, editing tool for the vessel is this uh, spline feature over here. And so what this does is I can change the um, you know, the, the, the curves of the vessel and uh, I can, you know, do things like I can add another node here and then, you know, mess around with the proportions here. And so this is a really powerful tool for, you know, experimenting with different shapes. Even if you're not 3D printing, this would be a great tool for visualizing different forms on the wheel. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you how to um, make this into, uh, I'm going to use a straight line uh, feature. So you have curves here. So if you just right click on this line, you'll have another a whole bunch of different options here. I'm going to go to line and I'm going to just convert these other shapes into lines. And so this allows me to work in straight uh, lines, which is really interesting because uh, again, this is another great way to experiment with different forms on the wheel and also allows you to rotate this. So if I just click and hold this and I can rotate this form. And so what I'm going to do is kind of start with a general sort of cup shape here. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. I'll, and then anytime I want to add one of these nodes, so a node is just a, a, an area where I can move it like this. I just right click roughly on the spot that I want to do it and I add node and then I can you know, in this case, kind of make a little bit of a, a, an additional kind of foot ring here almost. And so, uh, so that allows me to kind of, um, you know, make changes in the form this way. And, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how uh, you can adjust these forms to be able to um, cast in a, um, you know, a, a plaster mold. So anyway, now that we have a basic shape here, that I'm sort of pleased with. I'll probably be editing a little bit more as we go here. But um, now let's go over here to the to the options here on the left hand side of the screen. Now there are again, like I said, there are lots of different options, and some of these have drop down menus. Okay, so um, what what I would do is just th the most important thing is just to kind of play around with this. I want I'm not going to go through every single one here. But um, I can kind of show you roughly how things work. So let's say that um, uh, under the polygon section, if I say I want to add eight sides to this and hit eight and enter, now I have a vessel with eight sides. And um, so, you know, this would be like, a, you know, if you were to 
like say facet a vessel on the wheel or something. Um, now I can use the roundness feature and add roundness here. Oh, so sometimes what, what you'll have to do is add numbers between negative one and one. And so you can see I added a two here, so that's not gonna work. So let's say um, I'm gonna add say 0.4. And what that'll do is you can see it just takes that same, the sides and just rounds it off. So it's a little bit more subtle. And um, so that's kind of interesting. Now we can try this bulge feature, let's say, let's say three. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take each side and bulge it out. And so, um, you know, if you increase that, let's say to 10, now I'm gonna get a form that is drastically different. And um, so, you know, uh, this is a little bit, you know, I'm making a small drinking vessel, so I'm not, super interested in that bulge. So I'm gonna bring that back down to zero. And I'm actually gonna bring this roundness back down to zero. I kind of like these hard edges here. Um, so now let's try it. Let's go to the scallops um, uh, section. Now I'm gonna enter a number here, let's say five. And now you can see nothing happened with the form. That's because I don't have a depth of the scallops here. So I need to uh, you know, uh, indicate that there's scallops and then I need to uh, indicate also a depth. So let's say I'm gonna, I'll put in two and hit enter. Okay, and so now that's going to change this form even more. Okay, so now this is, you know, starting to get kind of interesting here. Let's see what happens when we hit phase. Now some of these tools, um, you know, you might have to have other features enabled for them to work. So let's just go back to zero on that. A lot of times what I'm doing is I'm just kind of experimenting with some of these. Let's look at wave waveform here. And now this is one of those that I mentioned earlier that has a drop down of all these different um, options here. So you can see if I kind of toggle through some of these different forms um, or these different uh, options here, you'll see how the form is changing. And um, so, you know, this is kind of interesting here. Now, um, at any time when you're working with the, the features over here, you can come back here and still adjust the form. And so, um, you know, I can, I can just, I could actually, I think if I highlight this whole line, yeah, I can bring this in and make the whole thing a little bit narrower. I can bring this down and um, you know, so don't feel like once you've made the form over here, then you can't uh, come back to it. So, um, so let's just kind of see what what some of these other options do. And uh, whoa, so <laughs> you know, sometimes you'll see things that are um, you know probably wouldn't be a great uh, object to cast here. So our goal here in this tutorial is to make an object to cast but this could be a great way to generate ideas for forms. So that's not gonna be uh, amazing for us. The exponentiate is probably gonna do it even more. So now we have this pretty wild looking form here. So let's just jump back to add, or actually let's go to subtract. That was kind of an interesting sort of pattern. And uh, you can kind of see what's happening on the inside here. The other thing that is sometimes helpful is um, using some of these other options in render. So you can look at a wireframe. So sometimes this is a little easier to see the thickness and some of the sharper angles here. And then way down here at the bottom is a background color and you can change this background color. And sometimes this is a little easier to see um, you know, kind of the profile of these, um, of the objects. So, so, you know, if you just kind of mess around with whatever you're comfortable with. And, um, okay, so let, let's kind of uh, just experiment with a couple of these other features here. So let's go, let's, let's play around with this ripple feature. So again, I add five, nothing happens because I don't have a depth here. I add, say, let's say, say two, and that's gonna create this form here. Now I'm going to cast this upside down uh, with plaster. So right here, this would be an undercut. All these sections would be undercut. So this isn't gonna work for me, but if you were interested in, um, say, taking a two-part mold where it's gonna come off on the left and the right, um, then something like this might work, although you would probably have to do a maybe a three or even a four-part mold for this particular 
um, option. Now that we have these ripples, let me just run up here to show you this, this option up here called twist. So twist is going to do what it talks about, it, or do what it kind of indicates, which would be twisting the form. And so you can get really, really complicated objects here. Um, and you can also enter numbers less than, than um, you know, less than one, too. So like, so let's say 0.3 is going to take our object and twist it like, you know, just, um, you know, like that. And so again, you can then still come up here and mess around with, you know, the different, um, you know, the different options over here. Okay, so let's take the twist out and let's come down and uh, this ripples a little bit too much. So I'm gonna take that out too, take that back down to zero. And um, so uh, let's see here. Let me um, kind of mess around with this form a little bit. And something like that is pretty nice, I think. So, um, okay. So now that I have something that I'm, I'm interested in, what I'm now thinking about is I'm going to be casting this upside down, okay? So what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any undercuts when I, this is going to be a one part mold. Now, if you have a two part mold, you could make a form that comes in like this, okay? But if I cast this upside down, the plaster is going to get stuck right here because this part is wider than this part, okay? So two part mold, this would be fine. One part mold, I need to have this a little bit past vertical. Okay, so I can have a couple different angles in here, but I can't. I but I can't bring this. Um, you know, I can't have this part right here narrower than this this wide part here. So um, so let's just kind of maybe I'll just kind of mess around with that and see. You know, so something like that. Let's bring this up just a touch. And never mind. Let's bring it up a little bit higher like that. Okay. Um, now, um, okay, so again, I would just kind of play around with these other options here. There's tons of different things you can do. Um, now that I'm happy with this, you know, I think this is something that would be um, pretty interesting to cast. And um, so I have a little foot ring here, a little bit of a detail in the middle of the form. What I'm going to do then is I come up here to file and I go and I'm going to save it. Okay, now select where you want to save. And, you know, I'll just type in um, test cup, okay, and hit save. That's going to save it as a Potter Drop file. And so um, the next thing, so I, what I like to do is save it as a Potter Drop file so that you can open it back up in Potter Draw and make edits if you'd like. And then the next thing you'd want to do is go to export. And export will allow you to export as an STL. So you want to do the same thing. And um, so what I do is put it in the same folder and I'm going to say testcup.stl and save that as an STL. Once it's an STL, then you can open it in other software like Cura or Tinkercad if you need to make additional um, adjustments to it. And so, um, so that's it. What I would do is just take some time and experiment and play around and save all of your different iterations of different vessels. And you can come back to them like a sketchbook. You know, these would be great to um, figure out, even if you're working in traditional methods, um, that, uh, you know, to be able to, um, you know, generate ideas and that kind of thing. So um, just experiment and um, have fun with it.